My name is Hannah and this is my No Buy Year. Makeup playtime is one of the best rituals that I have developed to cope with my year-long no-buy. The term makeup playtime was coined by my boyfriend Joe when he observed me sitting down at my vanity almost every night right before bed and just playing with makeup, putting on a bunch of makeup. Sometimes I'll put on a crazy editorial look, sometimes I'll put on different colors on each eye. The finished product is never polished, it's never Instagram ready. When I used to crave new makeup back in 2017 in my former life before the no-buy year, a lot of times I would look at swatches online or I would look at a beauty guru demonstrating the use of a new palette and I would have a craving, I would feel desire, I would want and I would think that what I wanted was that thing. It would trigger me to go and buy that thing or at least to want to buy that thing. I've realized that I think perhaps that all of that imagery is just triggering me to want to touch makeup, swatch color and, and just feel delicious with makeup. And I can do that without buying new stuff. Makeup Playtime also makes me aware of how big my collection is because it's never boring. Makeup Playtime is different every time and I always feel like my collection is just endless because I can't play with it all. Even if I had Makeup Playtime every night for a week, I wouldn't be able to play with all of my makeup. Makeup Playtime possibly every night for a month and there would still be products that I hadn't played with. So Makeup Playtime is a sharp reminder of how much I have, and it's very satisfying. And both of those factors really help to assuage any regrets that I might be feeling about the fact that I can't buy any new makeup because it's my no-buy year. Anyway, all I'm doing tonight is I'm filming Makeup Playtime for you. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. It's probably not gonna be great, and it's definitely not gonna be precise. I'm just gonna play with my makeup and bring you along for the ride. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. What should I do? What should I do? <laughs> so if you watched my last video, then you heard me talking about when I went over to my friend's house and she let me pick some items out of a box of beauty products that she wasn't using. One of the things that I took home from her box is this little Kevin Aquan eyeliner that she had never even touched. And I'm interested in trying it because I like Kevin Aquan, but also it's navy blue. Yeah, it's navy blue. So I'm gonna just kind of go ham with this all over my waterline and my eyes and see how it performs and see how it looks. It's performing beautifully and the color is gorgeous. I'm so into this. It's smudging out really well too with my finger. This is a really nice product. <laughs> it's called the eye pencil primatif. <laughs> like the primitive eye pencil. <laughs> Why is it called that? I was initially just putting it on my lash line above my lashes and then trying to smudge that line with my finger, but it was smudging out so beautifully that I ended up bringing it all the way up onto my lids as potentially a base for eyeshadow. You might have noticed that I didn't prime my eyes. I don't want to waste my eye primer for makeup playtime. This could potentially be like a one product look. Like, I would wear this. I mean, it, it's very, it's raw, it's messy, it's dare I even say, editorial, but it is beautiful. I have no idea how long this would wear all over the lid like this, but it is an eye pencil, so I expect it's designed to set down. It's a really pretty color too. I kind of want to put Glass Bowl, my ColourPop single, over top of this blue. Um, this is it right here really pretty shadow. I'm just gonna pop it on there and see how it looks. 
Oh, it's already starting to crease a little bit. The liner where I smudged it up onto my lid is already starting to crease in the folds of my hooded eyes. But I wonder if pressing this shadow on top of it might not set it a little bit and keep it from creasing further. incredibly pretty yeah I so I've now lost the hope that I could wear this eyeliner as an all-over lid color I think it would probably smudge too much and crease but it seems like it would work as a base for a shadow like this like I think the shadow has kind of set it and you can still see the blue of the liner coming through especially closer to my lash line it's a pretty good pairing so I want to buff out this color up more into my crease, but because it's Makeup Playtime, I'm going to buff it out with another shimmer shade, and I think I'm actually going to pick another duochrome, like something with a flip. I'm going to go for Urban Decay Lounge, this, it's like one of those MAC Blue Brown Pigments style. I just caught that between my legs with my cat-like reflexes. I'm feeling that old familiar makeup playtime feeling like this is about to get totally out of control. Well, that buffed it out all right, but it when I buffed it out, it lost its duochrominess. It, it lost its specialness. So I'm going to try again with a, a third brush, a different brush. So this one's fluffier than the first brush, but a lot smaller than that blending brush that I just used. I like the learning aspect of this. I'm not a makeup artist at all. I am an artist. My undergraduate degree is in studio art. So I studied painting and ceramics and bookmaking and all sorts of other art forms. And obviously I make my living sewing clothes. So I work with my hands all the time. But in this realm, I'm completely self-taught and I'm still learning all the time. One of the things I love about watching YouTube is learning. I love, like, I love watching really amazing trained makeup artists with individual aesthetics like Lauren May Beauty. I love watching her. I love what she does with shadow and color. But I learn a lot from Makeup Playtime. I really, I take risks. I take a lot bigger risks during Makeup Playtime than I would take just any other time getting ready. So um, I feel like it's helped me to refine my skill set and understand what I have and understand better how it works. It's fun. Why can I not talk and put makeup on at the same time? I feel like if I could have, I could have said everything I just said and continued blending, and it would have been fine, but no. All right, I'm actually, I think I'm gonna keep this brush. No, no, I will yes. I'm gonna keep this brush and I'm gonna blend it like all the way up into my brows. Another artist I really like watching, yes, I'm actually living for this. I really like watching Mariah Leonard. I love her aesthetic and um, everything else about her. Not to be creepy. I'm actually blending it into my eyebrows. That reminds me, the next thing I'm gonna do after this is to try darkening my brows with a powder, like an eyeshadow, because my brow whiz has, is almost done. Both brow whizzes are almost gone. I'm about to be stuck with only that pot of dip brow, which is the wrong color for me. So I need to be resourceful and find other things in my collection that I can use in my brows because I really, really don't want to use that dip brow. It just makes me look like my eyebrows are dyed red. And you know what it does? I'm gonna keep blending while I say this. It makes it look like my hair color. I can't do it. I can't do it. It makes it look like my hair color is fake. Because 
My eyebrows are naturally a lot ashier than my hair. This is my real hair color, obviously. So when my eyebrows are artificially more red than they are naturally, it makes the red in my hair look like it's probably artificial too. So yeah, I'm really resistant to that. I want to put something in my, like in this area, in my, <laughs> on the inner, <laughs> on my nose. You know, I want to bring the shadow all the way in. I'm going to keep using this brush, but I want to use a different eyeshadow. From a distance, the duochrome shadow going all the way up to the brow bone, I don't know, it's almost like it has the potential to look kind of patchy or messy because the way that it catches the light and which color flips in the light is kind of inconsistent. But there's something really cool about it. What do you guys think? Okay, I'm gonna take this eyeshadow. This is from the Morphe 35-0. It's one of the shadows that I depotted. I think it's the only duochrome in that palette. Uh, I'm gonna put that all on the inner corner, but, but more than the inner corner, the inner everything of my eye. I'm genuinely obsessed with this. I want you to see. I'm gonna close, I'm gonna zoom in. Going back into Urban Decay Lounge, the blue black shadow, and I'm gonna put that on my lower lash line. I'm gonna smudge that out way further down than I ever do in real life. I'm gonna use this little fluffy brush, which is a fluffier brush than I've ever used to smudge out my lower lash line, so we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna leave the eyes there. I am gonna put on a little more mascara just so that I can kind of see a more complete version of this eye look. I'm just gonna pile it on. So that's with mascara on the upper and lower lashes. I already had on crusty old dried mascara that I've been wearing all day. So obviously layering fresh mascara over top of lashes that are already stiff with it, you don't get the effect that you would putting mascara onto naked lashes, but it definitely intensified the look. Let's see if we can do something about these eyebrows. So I'm taking this kind of ashy brown eyeshadow that was also depotted from my Morphe 35O and I'm using this little angle brush and I'm gonna just put it in my brows. I, I don't usually do my brows this way, so. I actually kind of like it. Um, as the beauty gurus say, I'm not mad at it. I'm gonna do something about my complexion. Now, I don't always use complexion products when I'm doing makeup playtime. A lot of times it's about trying out eye products, trying out eye looks, and then I will go in with like blush or highlighter or bronzer if I'm wanting to get my fingers into something in my collection that I haven't touched in a while. But my redness and my skin concerns are usually the last thing I'm worried about during makeup playtime because I cover those up to even out my skin so that I can be more confident during the daytime. They don't necessarily have bearing on these other things that I'm playing with and this is just playtime after all. But because I'm filming it and because I'm actually kind of curious about how this eye look will feel if my skin looks a little bit better, I'm just gonna use this, this is the base product that I care the least about. It's the Ordinary Coverage Foundation and it's in 1.0 NS, which means it's supposed to have like a silver, it's supposed to have like a shine in it, a silver in it. And I wore it once or twice for the Poema photo shoot and it left me looking 
just a little bit off in terms of tone, and I think that was because of the silver reflex, so I almost never reach for it. My beauty blender is dry, but I'm not gonna bother to go wet it. I frequently do this. I use my beauty blender to soften the line where my eyeshadow has kind of gone out past the tail of my brow. <laughs> I'm not sure how the footage will look, but in the monitor right now I look like a scary Halloween ghost. I definitely think that this eye look needs some serious bronzing to balance it out. So I'm gonna do that. Let's play with, I probably need to powder. I almost never powder, but um, if I'm gonna go in with powder products straight on top of this foundation without giving it very much time to set, then I'm gonna just Make sure it won't be too patchy. Not that it really matters, but you know. Just optimizing playtime. Yes? <laughs> Zuri, it's not a point question. What is it? You guys wanna see Joe in his underwear? <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> Looking good. So I was just powdering a little bit with the Besame Violet Brightening Powder. Again, this is a product that I rarely use. I've been powdering maybe a little bit more often in Los Angeles in the summer, but really I never go through powder. I feel like I can be liberal with powders during makeup playtime. They're, they're not in short supply around here. I'm gonna use one of the things I shopped my stash for, this Wet n Wild Illuminating Palette. I'm gonna use this. This is like my oldest and most destroyed brush. It's from the Sephora collection and it's really soft and loose. That is what I like in a brush, in a face brush. Why am I not using this? It's so nice. And I think every time I'm about to reach for it, I remember this kind of like almost cakey metallic glow that I get when I build it up. Like right now I'm basically blush draping, like I'm building it up like crazy. But it doesn't have to be like that. And if I just do one layer with this big fluffy brush, It's actually really pretty and totally daytime appropriate. I'm trying to take it a little bit into my eye look just with this fluffy brush. I don't know what it is about me. I want the entire half. I want like everything from here to my hairline covered in makeup. Whenever I sit down to do makeup playtime, that is what happens. Well, that definitely helped me look a lot less ghostly. I like it. I really like when I get to this stage of makeup playtimes and I get to pick out a lip. A lip. Uh, I don't know what, I think red. I think I wanna see red with this look. You know what I'm gonna put on? I'm gonna put on Tom Ford Wild Ginger. First I'm gonna line my lips with this Wet n Wild gel red thingy. Lip liner. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of overline them because it's makeup playtime. It's too much. <laughs> I've gone too far. So I'm just kind of, I'm not, I'm not cleaning it up with this Q-tip. I'm just kind of smudging it out and softening that line. So it's still maybe a little too overlined, but at least the line is soft instead of being harsh and shiny. It's like soft and matte. I think that helps.
it's kind of crooked on one side and I can't get it straight, but <laughs> I don't have time to worry about it and I don't really care. My camera stopped recording while I was finishing up with my lips, but it would not have been the most enthralling footage anyway, so it's fine. I feel really ridiculous. I never do this in real life, obviously this is just for playtime. I think because this is a satin lipstick, not a matte lipstick, the reflection draws attention to the ridge of my lips where they're overlined, so this is probably not the best formula with which to overline one's lips, at least not if you have my lip shape. But I do like the dramatic shock of color with these dramatic duochrome washy eyes. Classic makeup playtime. So at this point in makeup playtime, what frequently happens is that even though I have makeup on all of the parts of my face, I don't want to stop. So I start layering stuff on. And that is how I feel right now. I feel like I want to do one or two more things. And what I'm inclined to do is to pull out my Moonchild Glow Kit and maybe some glitter. So Moonchild is a palette that it's hard for me to wear um, in the day to day. The only shade that I can really get away with is Pink Heart, which is the most natural one. It's not even that natural, but at least it's pink, so it's a color that we have on our cheeks for other reasons. During makeup playtime, I like to use the other colors, and I want to go with what my eye look is telling me, so I think I'm gonna reach into some of this blue, silver, green business. All right, I'm reaching into Blue Moon, which is down here in the corner. It does not look great on top of that heavy, shimmery bronze cheek. It really looks like a bruise. You can see how, especially straight on, well, I don't know if you can see, but I hope you can see how it kind of has that gray cast on me. Um, maybe that's just what it looks like. Might be what I'm layering it over. Might be my skin tone. It's fun though. Star, star is the silver one. actually really pretty. I actually really like that. I never reach for that highlighter. Star. Let's swatch it. Yeah, I mean, it's silver silver. I might try to get some daytime use out of that. It doesn't look as metallic or as ashy as I kind of always imagined that it will. Oh, I forgot about blue ice. Blue ice is the one up here. Where should I put it? Oh, I put it up here. Oh yeah, that's the one I should have used. I should have used this on my cheeks. It's like whiter and lighter. I'm gonna, I'll pop it in my inner corner. Maybe all I'm good for tonight. I think it is time to go and wash this off. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try to get some close-up footage. But first I'm going to spray some of this grape water onto my face. This isn't a setting spray, it's just water. And I usually use it first thing in the morning to dampen my skin if my skin is dry and I wanna put a serum on it. Um, I'm just gonna use it to kind of melt some of these powders into my skin because, man, there's a lot of layers of powder on my face. I feel really ridiculous with this overlined lip, but I do like the eyes. They're smudgy, they're a lot, they're messy, but it's fun. That is it. Thank you so much for joining me for Makeup Playtime. If you enjoyed this, please let me know and I will continue to film Makeup Playtime from time to time. I'll probably only ever post this as a bonus video. I don't feel like this is 
content worthy of either my Sunday or my Wednesday upload unless I'm pinched for time. I've been trying to think of some content that doesn't take quite as long to film and doesn't take quite as long to edit and isn't as emotionally draining, isn't as high stakes, content that's a little bit quicker and more fun so that I can start adding in more videos per week because that is something I would really like to do but some weeks it just doesn't seem possible because I'm so busy. Anyway, I really enjoyed this and I hope you did too and I hope you'll remember to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.